I don't know about you, but I love life. Amen? I love life. Whether I'm poor tomorrow or rich, whether my belly is full now or not, I love life. So speak up. Amen? Speak up for those who can't speak for themselves, specifically the pre-born babies, because they can't even be seen. But believe me, God was there. When Jesus was in the womb of Mary, he couldn't be seen by human eyes. But God was there. Amen? That's why Satan has targeted it. Satan knows that people don't usually have an awareness of what's going on in the womb of a woman. Satan knows it's kind of a gray area, especially for us men. It's kind of difficult for us sometimes to relate to what's going on inside the womb of a woman when a baby is there. So Satan took advantage of that ignorance. Satan has taken advantage of that to target these children because Satan hates <coughs> human beings. Specifically, Satan, let me tell you, hates babies. Satan hates innocent babies. Why? Because 2,012 years ago, Satan, hallelujah, was defeated, hallelujah, by an innocent baby. Amen? And he tried to do what? Even on that day, he tried to kill him. Just like he tried to kill the baby Moses. He tried to kill the baby Jesus. By the power of God, he couldn't do it. But many babies were killed by Pharaoh. Many babies were killed by Herod. But guess what? Not for all the wealth in the world would I trade places with Pharaoh. Amen? Not for all the riches in this world would I trade places with Herod to kill innocent children of God. God allowed those children to be killed. He protected the baby Jesus, but God avenged those children. So please help me. Please speak up. Please open your mouth as you walk away from here today. Please consider. Let it, let it cook in your heart. Let it germinate like a seed. Those are people in the womb. And there are forces out there armed with a lot of money. But guess what? The law of God and the word of God is powerful. More powerful than money. Amen? The truth is more powerful than money. The spirit of truth is more powerful than the greatest powers, the greatest political, the greatest military power, the greatest economic power. Caesar himself, the Roman Empire, could not stand up against the word of God, amen? Against poor, innocent people. The early Christians were poor, innocent people standing against the greatest kingdom the earth has ever seen. Where's the Roman Empire? Let me tell you, the Roman Empire collapsed 1,500 years ago. But God's kingdom is still standing, amen? Hallelujah, glory to God, praise God. Yeah, I was arrested over 12 times just in California, just for showing this image. Not for doing any uh, violent act, not for uh, uh, lying or doing anything wrong, but just showing these pictures like this. Because imagine if you've done something like this, and you're full of guilt, and you don't want to repent, you don't want to let the Holy Spirit give you forgiveness, then when someone shows you what you've done, your desire is to lash out at them. I hate that person. Just It's the same reason why, remember Stephen was stoned by the Jews. The first person to be killed for the testimony of Jesus Christ was Stephen. And what was he telling the Jews? Stephen was telling the Jews, repent, come to God. He's saying, come to God. God is giving you reconciliation. He's telling them their sins. He's saying, God is saying, come back to me, right? Come back to me. But they couldn't bear to hear it because they were so proud, the pride of their hearts. All they could hear was this man, this man is telling us that we're sinners. We believe we're righteous, but this man is telling And so what did they do? They picked up stones. They picked up stones and they killed him. They killed him. He was serving the living God and they murdered him. You see, there is a cost. There is a cost to discipleship. There is a cost to serving the living God. Most of us here, I hope, will not have to give up our lives for Jesus Christ. But let me tell you, no one, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you're willing, unless you receive the spirit of obedience, unless you're willing to lay down your life, your life for God. 
Do you hear me? Yeah. This, this speaks to me too. Could you do it? Can you, can you open your mouth for those who can't speak for themselves? Can you, can you suffer some embarrassment? Can you suffer some humiliation? Can you suffer some, uh, some pain, some rejection for God or for his children? Jesus said, it as much as he did it unto the least, the least of these my brethren, my brethren, he did it unto me. And he said, in as much as he did it not unto the least of these my brethren, he did it not unto me. In other words, what does this mean? If we say, oh, I love Jesus, oh, Jesus, I love you. You're so sweet, I love you. Praise God. And yet we walk by our neighbor is being murdered and we don't speak up. Let me tell you, we're liars. We're liars. We are liars. We are lying to ourselves. If we say we love God and we turn away from our neighbor being murdered, we're liars. It would be better that we never even said, I love you, God, in the first place. Do you understand? It's better not to pretend to know God than to pretend to know God and to lie to the Holy Spirit. Ananias and Sapphira, in the book of Acts, lied to the Holy Spirit. And God killed them dead on that spot. Have you read that story? Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Spirit. Don't follow the example of Ananias and Sapphira. Don't pretend to serve God. I'm speaking to myself too. Don't pretend to serve God, and yet you can't open your mouth for people who are being murdered. Whether it's through ethnic violence, through abortion, any innocent person being murdered deserves, deserves a voice. Amen. God's word says open your mouth. Open your mouth. Give them a voice. They can't speak for themselves. You have lips. You say you're part of my body. You say your lips. There's a song we sing. My hands belong to you, Lord. My lips belong to you. I lift my voice up to you, Lord, and sing hallelujah. But if you say that, if you say my lips and my voice belongs to you, God, then when you see the child of God being killed, you have to speak up. If I say I love this lady, this is my wife here. If I say I love my wife and yet her child is being killed and I don't even use my voice to speak up, what kind of a husband am I? What kind of love is that? What kind of love is that? Better an enemy than a friend like that. God feels the same way about his little children. That's why God lets these things happen. Let me tell you, God could have stopped this. I'm telling you the truth now. God could have stopped this. God could have stopped this from happening. God will avenge his children, but God is testing us. God is testing me. God is testing you to see what we will do. He's going to avenge them in due time. Jesus said, speaking mostly of Judas Iscariot, speaking of Judas Iscariot, Jesus said it is necessary that some offenses must come. In other words, some evil things like this must happen. But woe unto him through whom the offense cometh. Amen? Do not kill God's innocent children. Speak up for them. Hallelujah.